All right, everybody. We have a big quiz on Friday, and I want to make sure everybody is prepared. Uh, Coach Bergdorf went ahead and put the study guide together for the quiz because Miss Lou actually made the quiz. Um, so what we do is we made this study guide for you, so it looks exactly like the quiz. So you're not thrown off at all. We're not throwing you any kind of any kind of curveballs. No twelve to six curveballs coming at you. Um, but these questions are, are essentially identical to the ones on the quiz. Uh, you just got to understand and know the process and how to answer each of the problems. So I'm going to make a video for each one of these problems. I think there's 12 total. Um, so I'll just click on the video that you need help with the most. This is obviously the first one, and we're going to go through number one. Number one says write each expression shown into the correct column in the table. So notice we have two columns here. We have a rational column and an irrational column. Once we look at our equations up here, we have uh, square root of 9 plus 2, 1 over 9 plus 12.7, and so on and so forth. So what we need to do is, in order to find out if it's rational or irrational, you have to go in and look at each individual one. So like this, radical 9 plus 2. First off, radical 9, or the square root of 9, is that rational or irrational? And the square root of 9, or radical 9, would be considered Rational. I'm just going to go ahead and circle. I'm going to use blue. Are going to be rationals. And I'm going to use red as irrational. And I'm just going to circle things based on if they're rational or irrational. So the square root of 9 is rational. That is rational. 9 is a perfect square. And 2 is also rational because that is a natural number, a whole number. It's also an integer. So because I have a rational and a rational, my answer is going to be rational. So the square root of 9 plus 2 will be in the rational column. Let's take a look at the next one. 1 over 9 is a fraction. So that is a rational number. And then you look at 12.7. 12.7 is a terminating decimal. It's a terminating decimal. A terminating decimal is also considered to be rational. So 1 over 9 plus 12.7. Again, a rational and a rational make a rational answer. Let's take a look at the next one here. We've got the square root of 100. Well, 100 is a perfect square. So that would be considered to be a rational. But minus... 1.2894 dot dot dot. Notice there's no pattern there. All right? Since because there's no pattern there and it's going on forever, that right there would be considered an irrational number. That's an irrational number. Um, it's not repeating the same thing over and over again. It's kind of bouncing around and it's not a terminating decimal. So the answer here would be irrational because if you ever have a rational and a irrational together, then it would be considered irrational. So that would go on the irrational side. All right, let's look at the next one. The square root of 35. The square root of 35 is an irrational number, so I'm going to circle that in red. 11.5 repeating. See that f the 5's got the little line above it? Because that 5 has a line above it, that's a repeating decimal. That would be a rational number. So notice here, I've got a, an irrational and a rational. Well, that's always going to give me an irrational answer. So the answer there would be irrational. I think that was times, yeah, times 11.5, repeating. So it would be irrational. Okay, let's take a look at the next one here. The square root of 10. Notice the square root of 10 is not a perfect square, so that would be irrational. And then we have a fraction. Remember, we said all fractions here are rational. So if I have an irrational and a rational together, it's going to give me an irrational answer. So the square root of 10 plus 1 over 2 would be an irrational answer. Last but not least, we have negative 8. Negative 8 is considered to be a rational number. That is an integer. Remember, all integers are rational. And it says times 2.3 repeating. Remember, any repeating decimal is also going to be considered a rational number. So we have a rational and a rational. Well, two rationals always make it rational. 
So we're going to add negative 8 times 2.3 repeating to our list. Uh, hopefully this helped. Um, again, if you need something like a highlighter or uh, colored pencils or something like that for the quiz, feel free to ask your teacher or uh, go to the store and pick some up because this is a great strategy right here to use when you're dealing with rational and irrational, just being able to circle or understand which ones are uh, or be able to label them. So hopefully you enjoy this video and check out number two if you need it.